Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I do want to speak on the match between Bayern Munich and FC Barcelona. So I know that many of you guys are very nervous. Some of you guys are frustrated. Some of you guys are excited because this is a game where Barcelona must win. And I know that I say this in every video, like in every La Liga match, every Champions League match, but I'm seriously like literally trying to say that Barcelona has to win just for Barcelona to go into the next round. So I do not know about you guys, but I am very excited. I don't care what the result is going to be for Barcelona against Bayern Munich. The only thing that I do want to see tomorrow night against Bayern is for Barcelona to play well. I want Barcelona to compete. I want Barcelona to give Bayern a very hard time to win and grab three points or to find that tie. I want Barcelona to take away the ball from Bayern Munich and play their game. That is, that is the only thing I do want to see. If we end up losing 1-0 or 2-1 or 3-2, but in the end we see Barcelona compete, that is the only thing that's going to matter for me because that is telling us, it's showing me, it's showing the fans that this Barcelona squad it is improving and that is the route that we want to see Barcelona go through is go through improvements now here's the thing right I believe that Barcelona can win they can win and I understand that many are seeing Barcelona as a club that do not have players that are good enough to win against Bayern Munich tomorrow night but I have always said and I'm going to continue to say this these are a group of players that have been not used well but if they are used well they can be the best team in the world and if you guys do think that this team can cannot be the best team in the world that is only because these players have been underutilized throughout the past two or three years this Barcelona that we are seeing today they have been taught to think and to work in a very bad way Barcelona did have a coach where every time they did lose or tie the only thing the coach did say during the press conference was say that this is what it is we have to be realistic on where we are at you can tell that this team really does miss Messi or Antoine Griezmann this team cannot give no more this we had a coach like that a few months back and it made the players believe that they cannot give much more that this is just the level that they are in and that there is no improvement moving forward and that is why we do see Barcelona in this form in this state I have always said that Xavi once he did come in here to Barcelona he was going to pick up a very uneducated Barcelona and a team that does not believe in themselves and even in the past few games right we have seen glimpses of Ronald Koeman's Barcelona under Xavi Hernandez like there were moments where these players have shown that they were not willing to make that run they were not willing to defend all the way press high or sometimes they sat back very deep we have seen some tendencies coming from Ronald Koeman's Barcelona into Xavi's and so it is Xavi's job to really get and extract out Koeman's Barcelona and DNA away from these players and bring his version of Barcelona back into this club but it is going to be a huge transition it is going to be taking some time maybe about one to two more months just for us to finally see what Xavi was intending to do with this squad and this is also why we see so much criticism going on in the media and saying that Xavi is just not good enough that he should not be the coach we have seen so many trolls and so many people just talking so much bad and negative things about this Barcelona club. Like, for example, if you were to ask me, who do you think is one of the best center backs in the world today? It is Van Dijk, and I would also say right next to him, Ronald Araujo. If you were to ask me, who are one of the best midfielders in the world if they were in their A games, right? Assuming that everyone was playing at 100% of their capacity, I would say Frankie de Jong and Pedri, alongside Kimmich and Kevin De Bruyne. And then if you were to ask me, is there any player that you would bring to Barcelona to replace Ansu Fati to improve Barcelona. There is not a single player that I would bring in to replace Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati is currently one of the best players in his position and could be the best player in his position in a few years time. You guys are not going to be here and try to convince me that these players are bad because they're not. And if you were to and, and again, if you were to ask me, is there any player that you would bring in to replace Dembélé? I would say no. If Dembélé is on his A game, if he is under a well-worked Barcelona, under a great medical team which we are seeing in this club, if Dembélé ends up being at 100% of his capacity again there is not a single player that I would call from anywhere in Europe to replace Dembélé none like here's another way I would put it if we were to combine Bayern Munich's starting 11 and Barcelona's starting 11 and mush them together into one starting 11 and try to figure out what would be the best possible starting 11 combined the only players that I would take would be Alfonso Davis and Lewandowski that is it I would put Lewandowski for Memphis Depay and I would put Alfonso Davis for Jordi Alba every other player like Frank Frankie de Jong, Ansu Fati, Dembélé, Pedri, Gavi, Sergio Busquets, Araujo, when they are 100% fit, when they understand their game and how they should be playing on the field, they are better than a team like Bayern Munich. But of course, we are in a situation and at a time where Bayern Munich, they are a great team overall. They can play as a collective. They can beat any opposition. They can beat Barcelona 5-0, Real Madrid 3-0, Man City 2-0. Bayern Munich is a team that does have a very great sporting plan. And that is why we see many of these players blossom on the field. 
field. So going back and being more specific about this Barcelona game against Bayern, just for a brief reminder, Barcelona must win in this match. Something that has not been done before at Bayern Munich. Like if Barcelona wins tomorrow against Bayern at their home, that will be the first time in history for Barcelona to do so. And if Barcelona does not win against Bayern, the other thing that we could depend on in order for us to move forward towards the round of 16 would be for Dinamo Kiev beating Benfica. So even if Barcelona lose 8-0 against Bayern Munich, if Dinamo Kiev either ties or wins against Benfica, we will go through the next round. So this game is going to be like a final match. It is going to be like a Champions League or World Cup final match. Xavi has also said before and he continues to say it that this is going to be a game where we must go over there to win, to grab three points. He understands that Bayern is one of the worst teams to face if you want to go into the next round. But he does believe that his players can do it, that they can be superior. So these group of players are going to have to do what has not been done at Bayern in a very long time. We need to see a very high line. We need to see Barcelona have the ball, move the ball from right to left, from back to forward very quickly and press very aggressively. We need to force those mistakes coming from Bayern Munich. And there's only a specific group of players and a specific starting 11 that can implement those type of ideas, which we are going to be discussing on in a moment. But just to also give you guys another reminder, we're not going to be seeing Kimmich, Goretzka, and Nabri play for Bayern Munich tomorrow night. These are three players who are currently injured. The coach has confirmed that they will not be there. And these are also three players that did feature in that match against Bayern Munich and Barcelona in the previous one where Bayern did win 3-0. So it is going to be a huge loss for Bayern because Kimmich and Goretzka were two players who did start in that starting 11. We saw Nabri come in later, maybe I think in the 50th minute or 60th minute, but it won't be as big of a loss like if Barcelona lost Pedri or Ansu Fati. And the only reason why Barcelona is taking that bigger hit, it is because Bayern Munich, they do have squad depth. They have players like Komen or Sané to easily replace some of these players. Barcelona do not have that. If we lose Ansu Fati, we have no other real great left winger that can take over that position. Look at how we almost lost Dembélé to face against Bayern Munich. Who would be on that right wing position? Nobody. But Bayern Munich, of course, like I have always said, they have a great sporting plan. They really like to maximize each of those players from the starting 11 to the bench to the players even before that. So much respect to them. But like I have said, Bayern Munich will be losing their own players. Barcelona have currently already lost their own players. This is why I continue to say that having a very great squad depth within Barcelona, it is very important. But here is going to be the possible starting 11 that we could see go up against Bayern Munich. So I do expect to see a 4-3-3 having Alba on the left, Araujo and Piquet as the center back duo, Sergio Dest as the right back, Busquets, Gavi and Frankie as the midfield and up top we are going to be expecting to see Elias, Memphis Depay and Dembele. Now let's stay here just for a moment right because I want to speak about four different points when it comes to this starting 11. Point number one Jordi Alba. It is very 50-50 right now on Alba featuring in that match against Bayern Munich because it has been confirmed coming from Xavi that Alba has experienced some sort of discomfort against Real Betis so it's very doubtful that we could see Alba start and I do think that his availability is very important. We need Alba starting on the left back position but I'm going to assume that he's going to be okay that no one else is going to be starting in that starting 11 but if Alba does not make it, if Xavi and the coaching staff do say that he's not going to make it, forcing him on the field is just only going to extend his injury. I do expect to see Alejandro Balde start right next to Araujo and join the attack of Elias and Memphis Depay. Moving on to point number two Piquet and Araujo. The only reason why I picked this duo is because of their experience right? Because look, I know, I know, right? I know that if you were to combine a high line and having Gerard Piquet within that high line, it could be a disaster, right? But our intention must always be to have the ball. And that is what Xavi does want. He wants this Barcelona squad to have the ball and outplay Bayern Munich. We also need to have a defensive line where if Bayern do press the defensive line of Barcelona, we want to have great ball flow. We want to be able to pass it with no complications. And I think that with Araujo and Piquet, that is the most press resistant center back duo. And I do believe that there is a great reason on why we only saw Piquet play about eight minutes against Real Betis. It is because Xavi does plan on using this player to face Bayern Munich. And then moving on to point number three. This midfield that I have placed which is Gavi, Frankie, and Sergio Busquets. This is the best midfield possible. And I know that there is a player that's missing within this starting midfield and that is Nico Gonzalez which is the player that I do want to talk about because once we see Gavi, Frankie, and Busquets do their job, do what they need to do. Maybe once we do head towards that 60th minute or 50th 
minute, maybe even earlier, the first substitution that I do want to see overall, right? Not just in the midfield, but the first one I do want to see Nico Gonzalez enter this game. We have to see Nico because I do think that out of all midfielders that we do have, the one player that can actually compete against Bayern's physicality, which we know Bayern are going to be bringing, it is Nico Gonzalez. Nico Gonzalez is a physical monster, someone who knows how to hide the ball, someone who knows how to protect the ball and get through those tough, tight spaces. And look, one of the main reasons on why I am adding so much emphasis on Barcelona trying to retain the ball, play the ball, go up against Bayern, bring the game against Bayern Munich, it is because I am so disappointed from that match between Barcelona and Bayern Munich in that previous match where Barcelona lost 3-0. Because in that game, we did look scared to play against Bayern. We did sit back and just absorbed all the pressure coming from Bayern. Bayern played their own game at the Camp Nou, which was very disappointing, very nerve-wracking and embarrassing. And I want Barcelona to do the exact same thing at their home. So now I do want to end it with the last point, which is point number four, the wings. I know that starting Elias, it is a very big move, but Xavi continues to show that his importance right now through his system is to have wide wingers. And I just do not see Gavi starting on the left wing because Elias looks much more ideal to start in that left wing position because we have to stretch Bayern Munich's defensive line in order for us to make space within the midfield so Gavi and Frankie Busquets can find those balls into Dembele or Memphis Depay. So it is going to be a big moment for Elias because not only is he just going to be an academy player to start in that game but he is going to be given the chance to prove himself against a team that is considered as the best team in the world. So once we do see Elias start in that game, if we do see him, right, I'm just assuming that we do see him start. It is going to be a chance for us to really celebrate it because that is going to be a moment. It's going to show that Xavi does bet on these youth players. It's going to show that Xavi wants these players to grow. And if Elias does well, the only thing that we could do is be very happy for this player. As for Dembele, of course, we know what we want from this player. I do think that there's going to be way more focus on this player than ever before because we need his perfectly timed runs. We need Busquets to continue to find those balls to Dembele. And Dembele does need to be very lethal in front of the goal. I do believe that this is something that he has been missing in the past three to four games. I do think that he needs to be a better shot taker and I do believe that that moment will come. He is improving as a player overall. He's looking much more intense. I love the way that he did play against Real Betis and changed the face of Barcelona's attack. But if there was a moment for him to really peak and become that lethal player inside the box, tomorrow against Bayern Munich would be a really great time to do so. And for those of you guys who are questioning like, Kevin, why are you always praising this player? Why do you think Dembele is going to bring something for Barcelona? Look at what he has been doing over the past three to four years. Well, look, this is going to be the first time Dembélé faces against Bayern Munich since 2017. Barcelona have faced Bayern about two or three times since Dembélé joined and Dembélé did not participate in either of those games. Tomorrow, Dembélé is finally going to play against Bayern Munich and the last time Dembélé played against Bayern, which was back in 2017 with Borussia Dortmund, he brought in one goal, one assist and one pre-assist. So Dembélé has all the experience in the world and he knows exactly what it takes to bring a good result, to bring a good performance against Bayern Munich and we want that version of Dembélé Dembélé to be represented at Bayern Munich Stadium. We want to be competitive. We want to see Xavi's Barcelona really blossom in the highest level of football. But that is going to be wrapping up today's Barcelona pre-match preview. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.